Hello, everyone, and welcome to another ASUG Partner Webcast. My name is Maureen McInerney, Partner Marketing Specialist here at ASUG, and I'll be your moderator for this event. I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to join us today for this presentation. Today's webcast is being recorded. The link to the recording and the accompanied slides will be posted to the ASAC website, Calendar of Events, and all registrants from today will receive a follow-up email with the link to those materials once the webcast has concluded. I'd like to remind our audience members that you can submit your questions at any time by clicking the purple Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Today's webcast is Enable Cost Component Split in GL Accounts before SAP S4 HANA, sponsored by ERP Fixers. Our speakers today are Rogerio Solarios from RFERP and Paul Overgel from ERP Fixers. And with that, I'll hand it over to Paul to get us started today. Thanks, Maureen. Thanks, everyone, for joining this webcast. Um, I'm going to talk about, uh, just give an introduction to the speakers and a few preliminary slides, and then I'll hand over to Rogerio. So, first of all, just an introduction to the company, ERP Fixes. We are a platform of consultants that deal with most of the major SAP modules. We have an online platform for quick requests and issues. We do SAP optimization assessments. We do material ledger. We do Expo HANA transitional roadmaps, and we have certain custom reports that um, are available. I'll move on to the Speakers. So first of all, it's Rogerio Falaris is an independent SAP consultant who specializes in the controlling functionality. He has worked with IFRS and integration with product costing and material ledger, minimizing the impact of changes in SAP for companies in different locations. Rogerio has written a couple of books. One is the configuring, configuring controlling in SAP ERP. Another is one we both work together, which is introducing the material ledger in SAP S4 HANA. Um, on a personal note, Rogero is, is one of the top controlling experts that I have met. You know, he does it all. He does programming, he does configuration, he does training. He speaks at uh, various conferences, and he's also very passionate about this stuff, which is what I like. And I think you'll find out when he starts discussing this, this particular topic. I have worked as an ERP financial consultant in both North America and Europe. My specialty is FI and CO, and I've also written a couple of books. As I said, I'm only going to take you through a couple of slides where Jared will do most of the presentation. I'll come back at the end for the question and answer session. Um, in the meantime, throughout this webcast, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, submit them as we go along and we'll try to answer as many as we can at the end of the webcast. Whatever we can answer, we normally will send an email with the webcast summary and all the questions answered. So what are we covering? It's, we're talking about splitting cost components in GL accounts. This is functionality that um, is is normally very useful to companies that use the cost component split. The cost component split breaks out your standard cost or sales order cost or project cost or actual cost into the various component parts. It's normally, in SAP, this functionality has existed for, for at least a couple of decades. However, it normally exists in modules that are not the general ledger. So you can get it in, in product costing or material ledger or costing-based COPA, but not by GL account. Sometimes this causes issues because you might have reports that are more granular by cost component, but not necessarily tied with the general ledger cost of sales. So in SAP now has brought this functionality out with um, S4 HANA. Um, however, what we found is that not every company is ready to move to S4 HANA. And so we found that implementing this functionality has been very useful to some companies. Also, um, you will find during this webcast that even in S4 HANA, there's still some gaps with this functionality. There's still some things that we'll talk about, Rogero will walk you through, that this enhancement does and S4 doesn't as of now. And so even if you're on S4 HANA, it might be something you want to um, take a look at as well. 
So we'll talk about splitting of the COGS accounts based on cost component split. We'll also talk about splitting the ending inventory on cost component split, which is also useful. We'll look at customizing these accounts and some posting scenarios. We'll look at the remapping of non-COGS consumption accounts into a separate category so they're not split as well as the, cost, the COGS accounts. And we'll view some reports that can be used to validate the postings. And then Rogero will also show a demo at the end of all this. Right, so before we start, I just, we just want to have a quick um, poll on who's in the audience and what uh, situation they're in with regard, with regard to S4HANA cost component split. So if you could just select the option that uh, applies to you over the next 15, 20 seconds, on the next slide, we'll see what the results are. Thank you. Okay, so let's see what we have. Um, so on S4 HANA, utilizing the COGS split, we have no one, okay? Maybe it makes sense because I guess anyone on this webcast wants to have the split. So on S4 and not utilizing, we have 5%. On ERP, using cost component split is 50% and on ERP, not using cost component split is 45. So thank you for that. Now I will hand over to Rogerio to take you through most of the rest of this presentation. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining the, the, the webcast. Thank you, Paul, for the introduction. I used to say that uh, uh, in the, this webcast, uh, you have, I would say, most of the, the knowledge in the material ledger today, I think it's, it's in this webcast here that we share all the time and we do presentation uh, and everything together. So the idea for, for this functionality is that uh, uh, Bo and myself, we faced several times, uh, even before S4 HANA. Companies are always asking, uh, for example, why we don't use the COPA account-based process or their account-based COPA. And one of the disadvantages is that uh, we cannot do the cost component split, and then everybody migrated, everybody starts using the, the, the value fields, you know, the, the, the cost-based uh, COPA. So when I SAP migrated to S4 HAN and then turned it alive again, let's say the account base, and everybody asks, okay, where is the cost component split? And then SAP brought this to, 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 to the S4 HANA. And we realized that there is a big gap now because companies are moving to, to S4 HANA. They want to understand how it works. So in this way, we designed this functionality that is we can split the cost component uh, similar to S4 HANA, what S4 HANA is doing today, we split also the end inventory. Okay, so let's say companies that are planning to migrate to S4 HANA can now start using uh, uh, this functionality. It's, it's only during our entries that it's split, and we can do. You can also use the, the costing uh, the account based COPA because it flows to 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 COPA. Uh, the the advantage we have in this functionality is that we can also split in different moments, moments what I mean here. Uh, image like this, during the month, you evaluate your cost of goods sold as standard, and at the end of the month, when you perform the, the, the material ledger closing, you have the revaluation of consumption, then you have the actual cost. In this functionality, you are able to split the moment, that means if you want to send specific values to from a standard COGS valuation to one set of accounts, and also you can send the cost, uh, the revaluation of COGS to different set of accounts. So meaning, let's say in SAP words, I'm saying OBYC, COCT, that you can send also to a different account or the same account. This is also valid for uh, the stock when we go to stock. So what we do, we can also split and fix and variable in different accounts. That it's also advantage that we have. So let's say we can do moments, 
method standard revaluation standard revaluation revaluation of stock revaluation of, of uh, cogs open and fix and variable uh, in different account as well and we use also a specific uh, uh, fi document to do in this uh, the, the inventory uh, when I mean split inventory uh, you may say why we want to do this but if we start to think about companies now and all the data we might have or we can have in S4 HANA, and and it's let's say like this, we don't you don't uh, uh, use the data in the way uh, uh, it's presented today. So if I have my cost component split in my end inventory, that means I know how much labor is standing in my inventory or how much machine rates or how, how much depreciation is standing in my inventory or even variable and fixed cost is standing there. So you can build KPIs based on that, that you don't need to merge a lot of uh, uh, reports to achieve this. So we also have different account keys or, or customizing to say the standard uh, evaluation go to, to, to one account and the revaluation of stock goes to another account. Similar to who is familiar with uh, Material Ledger and talk about the key or BYC LKW, okay? It also gets a, a specific document number. Uh, the advantage on this one is that uh, it works similar to Material Ledger. So the posting closing of the inventory, it's reversed in the following month uh, because we close the month then Material ledger, the standard one, opens the month in the following month. The functionality does the same. It closes the month and opens the month in the set in the following day so that you have always the stock evaluated very standard. Also, the possibility to open as fixed and variable. So, mainly, uh, there is a, a customized table uh, there. It's similar to OS 400 as well. And this customized table tells you. Uh, the moment, so that means COG standard, COG revaluation, stock standard, stock revaluation. And then you choose which cost component you want to, 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 to map. Okay, so you map a cost component, you tell which the GL account you want to post this cost component and which cancellation account you want to post it. Okay, and then also there is a text, and this text that you enter in the customizing table is the text that it's, you, you, you see in the line item. Okay, so the line item will, will have this, this text. Uh, you split the account, so that one cancellation or several cancellation account, possibility to have fixed and variable, so you can see in the, in the small uh, board here that you, see, you can also find, see fixed and variable. And this moment, let's say you can ask, ah, it's but it's not full or it's not, uh, uh, let's say like this, how we can split different valuation class like we can do in our BYC. If you go to this direction and you say, I want to split in different valuation class or valuation type, then you have to imagine that your number of accounts in the balance sheet and the PNL, you increase at in times the valuation class you want to split. Okay, and, and the benefit of this as is management, it's only posting credit in that. We restrict the functionality that we don't open by valuation class because then you would need to do a several customizing and, and then, then you would take a lot of time. Companies that use different accounts for different valuation class would need really to, to tell different accounts to specific. So imagine if you want to split raw material, why would you need to have valuation class for raw material? So that's the main reason you don't see valuation class in the customizing table. Uh, there is another, uh, let's say like this point that we have to consider, who is familiar with uh, uh, material ledger. You know that material ledger groups the movement types in process category. So the process category will define the folders you see in CKM3, like uh, begin inventory, receipt, uh, uh, consumption, uh, purchasing, uh, consumption to cost centers, and things like this. So to make the functionality to work correctly, what we have to do for COGS, we have to make sure that in the process category, D plus, we have only sales, okay? So what we do uh, for companies that they use the CS and, C and CC customizing the group of the materialized type, it might happen that uh, movement 
types that are not really related to sales are going to the process category V+. So what we do, we do enhancement and then we just leave as consumption what is sales, okay? So only sales will be represented in the folder consumption because we use this folder to start the split. And what we we'll, what this will bring to you is that the new or the different uh, 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 movement type we can assign to different folders like you see in the CKM3. That's called, in this case, we, we call inventory adjustment. Before the change, this inventory adjustment was going to consumption. And then as the, the, the program reads the category V+, plus, it was also split in this. And we don't want this posting as COGS because it's never in COGS. Let's say it's a cost center posting. So that it's a... Uh, uh, the customizing we have to do in the material ledger side, okay? All the other customizing, it's done in the tool itself. So only for the material ledger, we need to do the analysis of the, the movement, and if there is any movement we have to split or to move from one folder to another, we just do this customizing to make it uh, uh, work there. So the functionality itself, and it's, it's very simple if you look to it. Uh, before you, you do the, 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 after you do the customizing, then it's just a, a screen where you choose what you want to do. Uh, I built, we built this one to, to, to show the difference uh, from the S4 HANA, what we have today, and the custom that this one that I will present. So uh, let's say in S4 HANA, we have the split of hogs standard, okay? The revaluation of consumption, SAP brought on in 1809, so who the companies that are before this, the revolution of consumption is not split in the cost of a good sold. Uh, today, as for HANA, cannot split the uh, uh, stock as well. So you have the stock, it's on one account, for example, finished goods and finished good whip and things like that. Uh, we can do the customize and also change the accounts uh, based on moment. Let's say if you are doing standard or if you're doing revaluation. So as for HANA, in the customizer, we don't do this. It's only accounting what you can do. The split and sequencing variable, it's important. Uh, uh, Paul mentioned in another uh, session that uh, today in the, in the universal journal, you can see what it's fixed and variable based on one of the currencies. Okay, but the idea of the functionality is that we split this in account as well. So let's say I, what it's fixed cost of uh, in a cost component. I put in one specific account what is variable cost. I also assign to uh, uh, another uh, account. In HANA, you cannot do this. You can see what's fixed and variable, but you cannot do by account. In the custom solution, we can do. The split valuation by valuation class, none of the, the, the solutions can do today. Okay, not even S4 and also uh, the solution we are presenting now. So mainly the the solution is very simple. We have we run by company code uh, the period that we want to post, and then we choose if we, if we want to do cogs or stock posting. Okay, we have this tick here to tell if you want to do the journal entry in finance by material. The difference of this tick by material or not, it will increase the uh, number of finance documents because any each material you have will create a a file document. If you don't pick this, then uh, we group the, 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 the values and then we post to to, to SAP. Uh, you can also reverse. So the system I and mean, the program is prepared to not post uh, two times in the same period. So you can only post, it's like material ad. You cannot run material ad closing two times for the same period. So if you have posted something in the current period, and you try to post the, the problem you tell you cannot post because not all the documents have been reversed. So you have the reverse process there. And then you do stock and cogs as well. In this moment, I think, uh, uh, let's say like this, it's important to understand that what are the prerequisites that we need? Okay, so let's say, of course, we need material ledger active. So material ledger should be active. <laughs> Sorry to use this uh, functionality. The other one is you need the actual cost component split because what you're doing, it's doing the split of cost component. 
If you don't, if you have material that is active but cost comp X or cost compound is not active, then there is no split. Like we, we cannot split this for you. And the program will give a message. If one plant from the company code is there, it's not being considered, so it gets an error. Okay, so you need cost component in the material ledger active to have this. What else you need? Uh, moving average material, there is nothing to split because it's, it's, it's moving average. There is no standard for this, so that will never be split. Uh, also, if you have material S2, it will split only the standard part. So in this uh, repost, I mean, we are doing a repost of COGS. We see here that when we, we do, I can group by material, it tells us, okay, I'm doing a, a, a credit in the in the COGS and in the cancellation COGS, and I do a debt in the direct material account. Or if I have more, let's say, cost components, like direct material, label, and things like this. So it shows what it's posting. It shows the, post, the posting date, the value, uh, the account you're doing, things like this. If you run in test mode, you don't get a document number. You, you just get the system ID number. If you run not in test mode, then you have the finest document posted by SAP. In the same way, okay, what we have, uh, we can do the comparison of standard COGS and, and also the revaluation COGS. So in the report that we provide in the ARLP, we have what we call moment. So the moment I can compare, for example, the red one saying this is a standard valuation, then the standard valuation I have two postings. And then I can change to uh, only price difference, then I can also see another two postings for that. So I, this, this part I'm doing the, the comparison of the, the revaluation of Cox. So we can also see the revaluation of Cox. The, the nice point of, of the functionality is that if you run the material ledger until the last step before posting closing, the functionality will work already. Okay, so you don't need to do the posting close to run this uh, uh, functionality. You can run the functionality in the middle of the month, so SAP will do the split only for the standard part because you don't have the revaluation at this moment. So you don't need to wait the closing to have the the post you can you can run every day, for example. Of course, you will always create uh, an account document. The same thing for stock posting. Uh, you have to imagine that when we post the stock, uh, let's say you post much more documents than the revaluation of stocks because uh, there are materials in your stock that you don't sell. So the, the but uh, you have in the inventory. So the number of, of documents that you post when it's uh, uh, for any inventories, it's much higher, okay? So it's not mandatory to post. It's just that if you want to split in, in, in the end inventory, uh, also by accounts. Also, we do the comparison of uh, a stock based on, on what the, the, the program will run and uh, what it's CKM3. So you can see this, okay? So it's really like this. And you can ask, what happened with uh, the not allocated and not distributed? The same way that material ledger does, the program will do. If it's not present in the end inventory, the material ledger CKM3, it's not present in the tool as well, okay? So the tool will reflect what it's in CKM3 transaction. If it's there, then it's posted to find If it's not there, then it's not posted. The split in the standard or revaluation, as I said, uh, we can do in two different accounts, okay? Uh, and then it's it's a, it's a company decision, it's a business decision to do this. Uh, if the company, they have the revaluation of stock in the same account in the material ledger customizing or when they keep the closing process, then it's important that you do also the, the split in, in one account. If you have more than, than one account, let's say you have uh, the standard in one account and the LKW key in another account, then you can also choose this uh, here. So it's 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 more how the company uh, wants to see. So you have the option to split both values. There is a report 
that will tell everything that has been posted, everything that it's happened, like which document number, which material you posted, uh, uh, profit center, value, account, period, and things like this. So it's called material ledger history. You can run this anytime, and then you have the history of document post. So it's important that everything that the system will do, it's recorded in, in a table. You can see the documents that it's posted. You can uh, see the, do the reverse the document files and things like that. So it's, there is a track, and you can always track what is going on. Okay, so uh, this is the, 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 the slide presentation, what we want to 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 see to to show to you based on on the on the presentation now we want to to show to you a, a quick demo to see how the functionality works uh, showing the reports showing the customizing table and then we will open for some uh, uh, Q&A questions okay Okay, can you, my screen is already shared. So let's start. So the first thing I will, I will show is the, uh, uh, the customizing table. Uh, that it's uh, this one here that you can see better. Uh, so the first moment what we do it's called uh, uh, COGS valuation, or uh, ML moment, actually. So in the ML moment, we choose which customizing we are doing. So we are doing COGS standard, we are doing uh, COGS revaluation, or stock standard, or stock uh, revaluation. Then we choose based on the, on the customizer of OKTZ, which the cost component split we are talking about. Okay, so I can tell this is direct material, then the account for direct material and the uh, the cancellation account for direct material and the tax that you want to put in the uh, line item view. Okay, and then you might ask, okay, I don't see here where uh, um, where it's the customizing for to say which company code is active or not. So what, what we do, we, we also read the customizing table for material ledger. So I don't need to tell this is active for company code A, B, and C. I check the customizing and say this, the, if the material ledger is active for company A, B, and C, this, this program can be used for these companies. So I don't need to tell I open to, to this company and not open to the other one. So that's the reason I don't see company here. Okay, so the customizing table is very simple. The only thing you need to align with the finance that you, uh, the number of accounts you want can be similar or the same as the number of cost components you have, or you can also aggregate. So let's say if you want to do direct material, everything that's variable cost or direct material in one account, labor, machine, overhead in another account, you can also do. It's just mapped to the same account as the, as the other one. And you can have also different cancellation accounts for, for uh, uh, each of these. Okay? So it's very simple, the customizing. You can have the detail by account and cost uh, component. And you can also define what is going to be the text and things like that. So the transaction itself, as I said, it's very simple. So we have what we choose. It's company code and the month that we want to post, okay? So the first the first play here, I will do uh, a test run, so because I don't want to show the, 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 the finance document. So then we just run.
So meanwhile, just to explain, uh, the only posting that it's reversed in the following month is the stock, because stock is it's always cumulative, and it's a balance sheet point of view. The PNL that it's called, it's not reversed, so you don't see a reversal for <coughs> sorry the cogs in the following month because the cogs belong to the to the uh, current month. So the outcome of the transaction is uh, you have here the, the amount. Uh, the document had a tax that it's based on on, on uh, predefined. That's the tax for you entered in the uh, in the customizer. So it's the tax plus the month and the year that you're running, the material, the plant. In this case, I don't have a profit center for the material, so that's the reason it's not showing. If you have, uh, the, the report is also prepared to show uh, if it's a sales order, if you have sales order stock or WBS stock, it will also show. Okay, there's one material that is this one here, and let's filter. So you see that we have two moments that we call here. And the moment for this material, as we are running COGS, is COGS standard and COGS revaluation. Okay? And if we open here CKM3, And then let's see, now we are talking about actual value. So if I do here preliminary evaluation, that's the standard, and I check what it's uh, uh, called. So one account is the cancellation, so offset cog. The other account, it's material overhead. So if I look here, material overhead, it's the same as the material overhead we have here. And also direct material, it's the same direct material we have here. <laughs> If I change the view here and I say now I want to talk about difference that it's the the, the price difference, you see that I also have here a posting for the price difference and the cancellation for the price difference. So that means I can split in different accounts or not. In this case, I did the same account. So both postings will flow to the same GL account. So if I look here, this is how it will look like my GL account posting. Okay, so in this account, that it's the, the COGS, you see also the text is standard and the evaluation is standard and the evaluation and the cancellation account. In this case here, we have only material overhead. Okay, now let's do a posting. So as it, it brings you a report telling uh, there is no error in the document. If I could post a thing like this, what kind of error is that? The same error like period is closing uh, for uh, uh, posting in GL or account is closed, account is blocked, and things like that. So I will remove the test run. moment you have to imagine that of course it takes only the same time as material edge to do the post and close because it reads what what you have uh, the movements you have and has to 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 check the difference from now and the other one now we have the document number okay and we can check the document number in finance and fb03 so then we see What's going on? So I have here cancellation cogs, material overhead, and things like that. If I do a double click, then the text is from the customizing table. And if I have more, it brings me the material and also the plant that we are posting. To have this detail, you have to click posting by material. So if you use any kind of FBL TN to do an analysis, you have the material in the posting as well. Okay? And if I look the balance of this account here, cancellation cogs, 
you see now what the, the cause that is uh, uh, cancelled. Okay, so the idea is that in financial statements version, you put these accounts together with the COGS account, and you have cancellation, COGS, and also the open. Why we put in the same group? Because you can have uh, a posting in the COGS account that it's not split. It's, for example, uh, moving average material that you sell. So if it's in COGS, it's not split. So the total, it's going to be what they say, pick and split plus the breakdown of the, of the COGS accounts. And then you can ask, what happens if I try to post again? Let's say I have a document there. So you have a list of the uh, documents you posted. And if you try to post again, then it you tell reverse the run for the period first. There are eight documents to reverse. So it tells how many documents you have to reverse. Okay. <clears throat> I will run now the stock. It will take a little bit more time because, uh, as I said, the stock, it gets everything. And what you have... Uh, uh, in COGS, let's say you have a range of 10,000 materials in stock and then you sell only 500, so the COGS will be much faster than, than this one. So I would say if you want to run uh, in, in a, not let's say that weekly based, this kind of this this uh, program, I think the best idea is to run COGS and then the stock you run on at the end of the month because the stock changes every day, every time you do a consumption, every time you do a sale, it changes. Okay, so it's 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 more a decision from uh, the company. Meanwhile, what it's run for, when it's run for stock, let's see the kind of report you have. So I can have one report, a simple one, that will show all documents that we posted. Okay, you can also add it. Let's say the run was three two thousand nineteen. Uh, the company code, the document number. Uh, if I have a profit center. If I have reversed the document, and what's the reversal document as well? Okay, so you have all the link here. Of course, the link is also in the document, but it tells which document you have reversed. Uh, the history report. So I can tell uh, company code 3000, the year uh, uh, 2019, and then you can tell which moment you want to see. I want to see only. Uh, COGS standard, for example, and then I run. Then it tells me everything that you posted. Uh, at the end, if you see that this document has been reversed, so that's not uh, relevant for you anymore. And the only post you have now, it's where reversal is empty. Okay? So that means that's what you posted. Why we don't delete from here? Because it's a history table. So if you post and reverse, you need to know what you did. So everything is stored here. And the document that you post that's not reversed, it's also stored here. You can also see for stock, for example. Then you have much more documents because, as I said, stock, it's really uh, <coughs> uh, a lot of data to post. So it's still running. But as I did a prior run, let's say we can do some checks here. So let's take one material. This one is only direct material, but in a way we, we can we can show without the problem. So I see here everything that's stored in direct material. Then I have direct material and offset stock direct material. Okay, so you, it, it splits in the same way, cogs and also uh, stock. So it's a very powerful tool if you want to have this detail in accounting. Of course, you can also have in some reports. Let's say if you have a, a material ledger drill down with the cost components, you can also see this. But this, let's say, it's an improvement <clears throat> and it's important for the ones that are moving for S4 because all the detail in S4, it's mainly from the universal journal. And if you have the universal journal, you can have this better in theory apps and all in the in the income statement, also the balance sheet point of view. Okay, while while it's running, Paul, I think we can uh, go to some questions, uh, <coughs> uh, and then we when it finished, we I show that the the stock posting. Thank 
you Rogerio and Paul. Uh, we'll now move on to our question and answer portion of the webcast. If you have any questions, please submit them now using the purple Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. And if we don't get to your question, know that the team will follow up with you after the webcast. We do have a few in there though, so I'll just get right to it. Uh, the first question, is material ledger actual costing needed in order for this functionality to work? Yes, it is. Because you need the actual cost, and then with the actual cost, you need the uh, cost component split. So you need the, you need the material ledger and actual cost to, to work. Uh, just to show one example, this is what we happen. Uh, for example, if I want to do the, the stock for a company, and then that's the message you get. Actual cost component split is not active for the plant. Why this? Because I cannot split what I don't have data to split. If the actual cost and the cost component is not active, then I don't get it. Thank you. The next question. Can this functionality be used in S4 HANA or ECC alone? Yes, it can be used in both. But as for HANA, there is, for, for the COGS, there is a, 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 a standard functionality, okay? Not with the, all the details, but as for HANA, you have, for the COGS, you have the solution already, so you can you can use an S4 HANA. Only for a stock that you don't have an S4 HANA. In ECC, I mean, it's a, a functionality designed for ECC, and so it's, it's you can use. Thank you. The next question, do you need HANA for these reports or do they exist in the current material ledger module? It's the only material ledger. The only thing you need is material ledger active. No need for HANA. Thank you. The next question, will this change with PIR conditions that have freight slash duty conditions? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Will this change work with PIR conditions that have freight or duty conditions? If it's flowing to material ledger, yes. Remember that uh, uh, we split what's in the material ledger cost component. So if you have the, the conditions for freight or, or customs, duties, everything, and this is linked to the material ledger that you see in the cost component split, then it's there. Okay, so then you have the solution there. So it's important that you have to see these conditions in material ledger already. If it's there in any cost component split or specific cost component split, then you have it there. Thank you. The next question, what are the ways to automate this process? Only run the reports in batch? Yes, that would be an option. Yes, you can schedule it. So you'd say if you want to do every week, you would run a batch every Sunday, first to reverse, another one to post. That is an option, yes. Thank you. It's the not next online question. at this moment, yes. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. The next question, are the tools the same as in ECC? Sorry, I cannot hear. Can you repeat again? Are the tools the same as in ECC? Yes, that's... I mean, this uh, demo, it's, it's a pure ECC. It's ECC HP7, so it's it, it's ECC based, and it also works on S4 HANA. And the next question, does material ledger have to be closed each time, and no. will it impact standard cost? No, no, you don't need to close material ledger. That's the benefit that you can run a weekly, for example. Uh, you can, for example, run material ledger, all these steps of material ledger if you're in ECC until the posting close. When you have this ready, uh, the functionality also reads the price difference allocated to the cost component. So you, you can have a preview posting. If you just run and the material ledger is not closed, you have only the post of moment zero that it's standard. So because there is no allocated price difference to stock and not also cost of a goods sold. So you don't need to, to, to have the material ledger closed. Thank you. The next question, is this custom functionality simply to cover the cost component split 
reporting in account-based COPA? Yes, I mean, the requirement is started from customers that first they want to understand uh, what we can do prior to S4 HANA, that now we, we know that we have to move to, to costing-based, uh, to account-based, and we have costing-based, but in the cost-based, we don't have uh, the cost component. So the idea that we had was, oh, let's bring these two ECCs that the companies that get familiar with the solution that SAP will anyway use in S4 HANA. So that's the idea, to split the cost component for two moments of your inventory, let's say you end inventory and also the cost of a good sold, that we are the companies are prepared for the S4 HANA. And just, just that... to add to that, um, sorry, just to add to that, even though that is, it's a huge advantage to have account-based COPA and have the COGS account split. One thing with um, the, the functionality in S4 HANA is that you can only add splitting accounts if they're cost elements, if they're primary cost elements. However, with this functionality, the accounts don't even have to be cost elements. And you can see you can split the you can split a balance sheet account or a PL account that's not a cost element. So even though account based COPA was one of the 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 um, reasons or justifications for us having this functionality, you don't even need account based COPA in order to have this functionality. Yes, thank you. Okay. And the next question, who do we get in touch with to implement this for consulting opportunity? Uh, we'll, 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 ERP fixer. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, we'll, we'll give you that information. It's really ERP fixers, but at the end of this uh, session, we'll, we'll, send an, we'll show you an email that you can uh, send an email to if you want to inquire more. Next question, in S4 HANA, is it running online? If it's customized, yes, the COGS. And the next okay. question, well, I, I think we need, I'm sorry, that, that, um, that previous question, it, whoever, whoever wrote that question, if you could expand on that a little more, because it's not very clear if that question means in S4 HANA, does this custom functionality run online or does the S4 HANA split run online? So if you can clarify that um, either during this call or later on, we'll definitely make sure we answer it properly. The next question, are the custom tools available in ECC 6.0? You can use in any, if you have, the only requirement is material edge active. Then, then you can uh, use the, the tool. The next question, is it a good strategy to implement COG split now before going to S4 HANA? Yes, I would say so because out there, just moving a little bit from, from, from the, the webinar, but all the changes you do in material edge after S4 HANA it's not so easy as you have in ECC, so all the programs like to reset cost component split, to rebuild cost component split, bring act or not, it's kind of tricky in S4 HANA. So let's say all the change that you're preparing for S4 HANA, it's my point of view, it's my personal opinion, I think Paul and myself we share this. It's always better to bring these two ECC that you get used, you know the issues you have, and when you are in S4 HANA, it's not only the impact of change, of, it's only the impact of change for S4 HANA, not change in material area, cost component split, and things like that. Thank you. Uh, and I'll add to that to, sorry, sorry, just one thing on that. I definitely agree with Rogerio there. If you, if there's a business justification for this functionality, it seems to us that it's, there's a benefit of implementing now versus later. Um, there's several reasons. One of the main reasons is that S4 HANA introduces a lot of new things. The more that you can get accustomed to, the better, especially if there's a business justification for it. I mean, if there's no business justification, that you can wait. But if there is, one, you get used to it. Two, you are satisfying the business requirement right now. And three, it actually does prepare you from a system point of view. You have those accounts already in place. You have the logic in place in order to move to S4. 
And the next question, the process in ECC is to run reporting we have to run in batch, but it sounds like in S4HANA you can make the system run it automatically without posting to COGS. Is that the case? Then, then we go back to 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 uh, question. That means uh, this functionality in, either in SECC or S for HANA, you need to run. It's not online. Okay, so it needs really to 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 go to the functionality and execute it. So both uh, system, it's not online posting. This custom functionality, ACC, the cogs uh, in S for HANA, the cogs is the, the cogs. If you do the customizing in S4 HANA, then it's online. Just the custom functionality that you need to perform the action. Thank you. And it looks like we have time for one more question. Would it be helpful to move to an account-based COPA from cost-based COPA in ECC before moving to S4 HANA? Paul, do you want to answer this one? Yeah, my, my, again, just an opinion. My, my opinion is yes. Um, and the reason why I say yes is it, it's again back to, um, how much change management is going to take place when you actually do the S4 HANA conversion. For those of you, I'm sure most people know already in S4 HANA, there's a lot of change, right? There's new fixed assets, new cash management. There's credit management based on FSCM, material ledger, account-based COPA, secondary cost elements as GL accounts. There's a lot of stuff that you have to get used to, and it's not going to happen when you go live with S4, right? So there has to be some kind of phased approach of implementing the low-hanging fruit that you can get used to before then. Otherwise, you're going to be in the same scenario as co many companies I've worked with that implemented SAP at the turn of uh, 2000 that are still working things out almost 20 years later, right? So as much as you can do before that's not disruptive to the business, I would say do so. And I think something that's not that disruptive is account-based COPA. What are you doing? You're checking a box. You're doing a few config settings. And maybe the most disruptive thing is that Existing sales orders that don't have a profitability segment, you may have to run a transaction so that they have them. That's one of the things with account-based COPA. So, so my personal opinion is that it's one of the things you can do beforehand. And I didn't even mention in all those changes, customers and vendors, now business partners, yet another thing that's changed, and Fiori being you know, the, the go-to user interface. So there's so much that if you could actually strategize what needs to be done now versus later, Take the things that you can do that will be minimally disruptive to the business and that the users can get used to beforehand. Well, thank you guys. That looks like all the time we have today for Q&A. Um, I will hand it back to both of you for any closing remarks before I close the webcast today. Rogerio? Okay, the only the only point I wanted to 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 show that was missing the in the presentation, the stock. When we post the stock, you can see here that what we post it's automatically reversing the fall amount, so it works equal or same as material ledger. Everything we post in stock, it's reversing the fall amount. And if you run the reverse, of course, this clears and this other point clears. So with stock, it's always reversing the fall amount. Cogs, it's not reversed in the in the in the following month. Uh, for the stock posting to take more time because it's with all material that it's standard and um, material edge active and then and, and cost component active. Uh, the cogs, uh, uh, not that much. Uh, I think that's mainly what I wanted to we wanted to to show with the the, the tool that it's a, a tool to split to prepare the company to prepare uh, your, your company for S4 that you understand what is going to happen to change and get used to what it's new. That's good. Thanks, Rogerio. And I just want to say thank you to everyone for attending this webcast. I hope it was useful. If there is any, uh, if you have, first of all, we normally send all the questions that have been asked as well as the answers to all the attendees of the webcast. And if you want to know more about this functionality, 
or any of the conversion strategies or roadmap um, questions to Hana, let's just just uh, send an email to info at erpfixtures.com. And looking forward to, to having uh, uh, most of you on the next webcast that we have. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you again, Rogerio and Paul, for a great webcast. On behalf of ASUG, I'd like to thank ERP Fixers, as well as everyone who took the time today to attend this webcast. If we didn't get a chance to answer your question, the ERP Fixers team will follow up with you after the webcast concludes. Before we go, though, I'd like to leave you with some quick information on ASUG for anyone unfamiliar with our user group. ASUG helps connect SAP customers to the people and information they need to maximize their investment in SAP. If you'd like to speak to someone about becoming a member of ASUG, please message info at ASUG.com. As mentioned before, the recording and slides from today's program will be posted to the ASUG website, and all registrants will receive a follow-up email. Please take a moment to complete the survey by clicking on the green button at the bottom of your screen. And with that, I'd like to close today's webcast. Have a great day, everyone.